It's a true pleasure to welcome Sir Martin Sorrell. He runs the media conglomerate WPP, which owns powerful brands like Ogilvy and 250 other companies around the world with 100,000 employees. It's a true pleasure to welcome you. Good. We're not a conglomerate. I, I, I bristle when you use the word conglomerate. We're a relatively focused advertising and marketing services company, but never mind. <laughs> Uh, so Martin, it's, it's a true inspiration. Uh, uh, we were listening to you earlier when you started, I think, in '85, right, yes. uh, with a very small company, right. and then you tried to take right. over wire and plastic products. It was yes. a very unusual name compared to what you run today, yes. but you made WPP yes. a powerhouse around the world. Yes. Uh, so I just wanted, you know, a little take on, on how you started the journey. Well, uh, we started. I mean, wire and plastic products could have been any small quoted company. We were looking for a small quoted company which had a consistent profit work record, was cheap, uh, had management that was mature but not senile was what we, we said because we wanted them to continue to run the business. We still run the wire basket business t uh, today. Uh, didn't have any debt, interestingly, uh, and had a small market capitalization of about a million pounds because that's all we could afford to to, to buy because we, we wanted to buy 29.9% because then you didn't have to make a takeover under the rules which are still the rules today. So that was really, so it's what the French call a coquille uh, shell company and we wanted to get a premium into the share price which we succeeded in doing. Um, as I said in, the, in the, the speech, people like it's better, it's better to travel than to arrive. It's the anticipation rather than the reality, <laughs> the expectation rather than the reality of the support. So it worked out very well. I mean, it could have been, uh, we did look at about four or five other companies, uh, but it's quite difficult <coughs> in that initial conversation to get people to have faith in you that you can do. And, and that's why reputation or experience is so important. I mean, if you've, you know, I'd spent nine years at Sarches as the uh, CFO, doing the do-it-yourself uh, uh, multinational, really. And therefore, there was some basis to the belief that Gordon Sampson, who was the CEO of Wire and Plastic Products, there was some basis to his belief that we could uh, do it. I mean, there is a very interesting story, which is too long, uh, probably, and too boring. But it, 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 very simply put, Gordon Sampson's advisor was somebody at the, the brokerage house, was some people that I'd worked with very closely. So, you know, it's about luck. And it's about you make your own luck, and it's about knowledge and contacts and networks. And why I do think experience in an industry is important. It's totally against today's thinking. I mean, today's thinking is <coughs> do it fast, do it quick, flip, flit from flower to flower like a bee uh, without spending time. And I think that's not, I, I still think that's wrong. I still think that focusing on an industry, focusing on a company, building knowledge and understanding and reputation, whatever you want to call it, is important. The two different things you touched on is one is you have to have that vertical expertise and build a reputation for years in a particular yeah. industry and a company. And the other part is, uh, you know, because of a reputation, I suppose, right. and the connections, you went into uh, an acquisition spree right. after five years of right. running this company. But if you look at Silicon Valley, yeah. without this entrepreneurial and VC culture, yeah. uh, we wouldn't have been where we are today with all these startups coming no, together. It's, it's different, though. You see, I mean, you know, if, if you, you look at it in terms of scale and quantum, uh, obviously, you know, we we pale into insignificance. I mean, we're only twelve billion dollars, and you know, you've got uh, Apple and Google. Uh, 200 billion dollar plus I mean so we uh, and they've done it far faster we know we've been at it for 25 years so uh, it's it, it's it's uh, apples and oranges um, I mean so or it isn't even that it's sort of coconuts and uh, and uh, pine nuts um, it, it's 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 a very different thing but the, but the point that I, I was trying to make was this and I think it is really I think it's an interesting opportunity you've got this weight of private equity money you've got, which is in the private markets. Running public companies is becoming increasingly disenchanting because of corporate governance, because of limits on remuneration, because of uh, increased taxes. You know, we're in the UK now we're gonna have capital gains tax at the same rate as income tax, so it goes from you know, 17, 18%, whatever it is, up to, to 50%. I mean, it's going to, it's going to disenchant and, uh, and demoralize uh, entrepreneurs now they're very much more mobile than they were that's a big difference so you know you can you can go wherever you want to go and start the company wherever you want to start but the the payoffs in technology are so colossal 
that again looking at restructuring a company taking a legacy company which is much more difficult to do because with a, a, what I call a clean sheet or a white sheet of paper company you start with no constraints no you know in the newspaper industry you're felling trees and and you're distributing newsprint which is clearly in the in the age of the Kindle or the the iPad uh, an, an unintelligent thing to, to do to say the least so things have changed but I do think private equity money <coughs> plus this disenchantment with corporate bureaucracy particularly amongst the young plus the opportunities to take plus the scale of you know a France a Germany and Italy a Spain and the UK because these are all two three trillion dollar economies you know together the e eurozone is an 18 trillion dollar economy bigger than the United States but you know you can't say that it's one 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 country obviously in comparison but the scale is so big I mean the growth rates are not there but so, so I think the big restructuring opportunities private a lot of liquidity debt will come back into the markets at some point in time it already has to some extent so I think it's some really interesting opportunities so if I was sort of starting again I, that's where I sort of focus a lot of time and attention. Having said that, sitting here in Silicon Valley, where you have the VCs like Joe uh, Axel, etc., uh, Sequoia, whoever it happens to be, the, these are obviously big opportunities that can be exploited. But but you have to understand that that VC money is very expensive. Um, coming back to the valuations, uh, you know, we take Yahoo and AOL and and especially Google. I don't want to keep harping on Google because yeah. you spoke a lot about it, but you know. There are expectations that people like you and, and companies like yours should be the the leading factors in terms of uh, advertising revenue. And well, well, Google comes and suddenly takes away the uh, the well, lion's share. No, I think I think you know we've suffered. Our industry has suffered. First of all, I think the agencies are in a better position than the media owners. Media owners have more at risk because they choose a technology and they they're not uh, agnostic. We are media agnostic as long as we don't get shut out of a channel or a, a distribution we're fine so as long as it's not a closed loop as long as you know we have access on behalf of our clients then it's fine uh, and we don't make technology bets which is what media owners do now I, I think it would be unrealistic to believe that we could continue to dominate but you know we had two we had two things in the last five years or so that from a stock market point of view being been, been, been an issue one is the G word which is the disintermediation of you know, Google disintermediation will we get dis disintermediated out of our industry that has not been the case I mean if you look at our uh, our revenues did fall last year by 7% uh, you know we've re recovered in the first quarter we're seeing growth now in April a significant difference in the United States now it's not wonderful uh, and you know flat you know flat is the new up and, and, and uh, in, a, in a lot of cases but you, you have a problem when you run a legacy company I mean you've got to as you know as we always say you have to change the engines while you continue to fly if you start a company from scratch you don't have any of that so you can afford to be a disruptive force um, to to more established operations so it's much easier to do that it's 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 much more difficult to run an established business and change it rather than start a startup. You know, part, part of the reason is that, that, that VCs and, not private equity companies, but VCs, the, 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 the criteria, despite the internet bust of 2000, 2001, VCs still look at startups in a totally different way. I mean, they don't worry about cash flow, I and mean, it's all more about cash burn. Uh, they they look at market penetration. They don't look at profitability. Monetization is you know something everybody is struggling to do. But there are excuses <coughs> for lack of monetization. You're running a publicly quoted company, listed company with quarterly results. There is no excuse. You're only as good as your last quarter. Which again, you know I think that's why I come back to the restructuring private equity route. As a, I think you know, I think that's where we're going to see some very significant opportunities so I think scale lack of growth restructuring private equity money lack of attraction of running big corporates which is going to become even less attractive right? I think all adds up to some very interesting opportunities sort of private equity restructuring as well as VC Silicon Valley and by the way add to Silicon Valley Bangalore and Beijing and and uh, 